and stay in school. But listen, our next guest is a three-time All-Pro, five-time Pro Bowler. Ooh. He makes a living patrolling the secondary of the Chiefs, Chiefs kingdom. Now listen, uh, just put it in perspective, one season he had 75-plus uh, catches, four-plus uh, four plus interceptions, Ooh. and two TDs. An absolute monster at the safety position. Let's say good morning football to my man, Kansas City safety, Eric Berry. Oh! Good morning. Good morning to you. I don't now, think Eric is ready for how excited we nah, are to have him. We're shy of a cannon, dude. We better get ready. <laughs> now, um, we ran into each other during the Super Bowl. Um, I was moderating a panel discussion with a bunch of guys, and it was an absolute ple pleasure, pleasure. And then afterwards, me and you were talking, and you were like, hey, yo, Nate, uh, I got to talk to you about uh, back in the day, like 06, 07, and I'm playing in Madden, and I used to play with you a ton. Mm. And you were referencing a song by uh, Young Dro and T.I., and my girl got a girlfriend. Yeah. And it was something. Something used to say every time you threw the ball to me and would light up your boys. Wait, yeah. what? What is this story? <laughs> so, like, uh, you know, we big in Madden. Yeah. yeah you know, man. back at home or whatever, and we always playing against each other. And, you know, back then I played with the Vikings, and <laughs> they had, like, the perfect personnel to fit my system. You know, okay. a lot of speed, get people out of space, and, you know, you know, catch and run. So, <laughs> a lot of times on third down, I would hit Nate. And every time I do it, I frustrate my friends, and I just be like, Nate Burrow got a Burrow scene. Oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was, just, it was just a little Let's song. Wow. You know what I'm saying? That Did he ever just take to with the toe drag swag on Madden or no? Was yeah, that I, don't think that, I don't think that feature came out. Yeah, yeah, that feature right. was Those are the Vikings on. teams after Randy left. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Well, listen, I appreciate that. There's nothing like playing your boy and giving him the business. But speaking of business, you're here for the business combine. Now, this week we're talking about the scouting combine, and we love everything surrounding that. Tell us about what's going on with the 2018 business combine. Man, this is an amazing event, and... You know, business has always been something that I wanted to get a part of, but never wanted to dive in too deep mm. without having the proper knowledge. And just hearing the stories about, you know, players not knowing what to do when mm. they're done. I mean, you, you've benefited from those type of programs where yeah. you got to go and, you know, see, see, survey the land, see what you wanted to do, see, hear from professionals that have experience in those fields that mm. you wanted to dive in. Well... That's what Caleb did, you know, big, big ups to him, man, yeah. because Caleb's we've met some of the, mm -hmm. the, the biggest CEO, CEOs. Ben Moss last night, we talked with him. He's like one of the biggest real estate guys down in South Florida that deals with sports and entertainment. Mm. Um, shoot, we met with, uh, man, so many people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jesse Isler. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Married uh, the Spanx creator. Yeah. And yeah. got to hear about him and his whole story about his come up. And we're starting to see that a lot of these things that these CEOs and these millionaires and potential billionaires have, we have the same thing in common. Mm. We have that common thread. It's just all about being able to carry it over from our profession and being able to do it in the business world. Mm. And um, just this whole program being able to shed that light and yeah. show us that we are capable and, and we are we have the abilities and the assets and the connections to be able to make those type of moves has really been enlightening and, and just inspiring. Getting ready for life after Potential football. Potential billionaires. Yeah. Yeah. Talking He's about. saying, all right, I think the, one of the most deflating moments of last season happened mm. in week one. The air was sucked out of the room for all of us no when you went down rupturing your Achilles. you got to tell us how you're feeling. Give all of the Chiefs Kingdom an update on Eric Berry. Man, I'm feeling great. Uh, been working out, training with my brothers down in Florida. Um, I mean, we pretty much had a process, you know, and we just sticking to that. We know things are going to happen. Things aren't always going to go our way, but you just got to put all your energy into the things that you can control. And my brothers and family and just the Chiefs Kingdom have, have been reminding me of that, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I've just been so focused on the process. I mean, it's just getting it in every day and grinding. I love it. Yeah, I will say this quickly. That smile is very telling. I think you're ready to go. <laughs> Seeing you rupture your Achilles and not even going down until you needed to fall on the ground. Mm -hmm. Reminded us out. of Kobe. You remind us of Kobe. Yeah, we were talking about it. Man. Thank you. No doubt. We want to see you back out there. Obviously, Chiefs fans are dying to. It's been a wild couple of weeks for Chiefs fans. So give me one word that comes to mind to describe how you felt when Alex Smith was no longer going to be a teammate of yours. Hmm. Um, it was... Let me... The biggest thing about this whole season and all the transactions is I think that's the worst part of having that injury, you know, because seeing now that was my last season sure. with Alex, you know mm. what I'm saying, or yeah. seeing this is my last season with Ron and Marcus mm. and the bonds that we built and just the things that we talked about, you know what I'm saying, like, it's just hard to see them go like, dang, that last year was, that was my last year with them and I didn't get a chance to play with them. Mm. So that's been really Marcus cool. especially, from the outside looking in, it always felt like 
he obviously was so talented, such a ball hawk, but he also brought like that attitude, that swagger yeah. to that secondary. What are you losing in Marcus Peters? And what are the Rams getting? Man, I think he's probably going to kill me for this because I know he tried to keep a lot of stuff under the radar, but at the same time where everybody was kind of bashing him for certain things, like Marcus would go to a store and kids would, parents would be giving their kids, pick, letting them pick out their shoes for the, the new school year, wow. you know what I'm saying? And he'll just be like, I got that. Don't even worry about it, moms. I got that. I'll pay for it. You know what I'm saying? But the, the headlines that reach are, are the ones that are the negative ones, yes, right. which I don't really think are negative. It's, it's a balance between the way you express yourself or whatever, and it's all opinionated, and everybody got their own opinion. But why not put the stuff that he's doing in the community? You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about him draining his Adidas count to, to do a, a coat drive in Kansas City. Wow. But nobody hears about that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So just the type of person he is and the type of things that he does, I think I really just wish people would try to understand a person a little more. You know what I'm saying? I know they see, see us on the field, but try to understand where all this stuff is coming from before you make a judgment on somebody. Now, Patrick Mahomes' era has officially... Mm -hmm. Um, started and you have been seeing him from a different perspective, not as a wide receiver catching ball from him, but on the other side as a safety. Um, what are the fans going to see in Patrick Mahomes, and what are you excited about with 2 p.m.? Man, I'm, I'm excited because he's confident, but he's also a humble guy. You know what I'm saying? He knows his abilities and he knows he has a lot to learn, and I'm excited about it. You know, just seeing him in practice, being able to throw on the run, yeah. you know, and challenge his skills to see what he can and can't do. Mm. And just every day trying to develop and get better and get better. Um, that's something you can build with. Yeah. So. I feel like I don't, and I didn't look up your combine numbers, but I'm pretty sure you crushed it. Yeah. I'll agree. I'm pretty sure you crushed the combine. Is that true, Hamilton? Great college player yeah. right there. Amazing. Uh, it's going on right now this week in Indianapolis. Uh, what is your one takeaway, your memory from that experience? Was it all a blur? If you could take, like, one snapshot from that, what would it be? Um, it would be sacrifice. Um, that was the, that's the word because, of course, you know, you want a, a lot of guys in this situation, they want to make it to the NFL and they want to do big things. And you can almost smell it, you know what I'm saying? But you can't take your foot off the gas right now. You got to keep your foot down. And the combine is a grind. Like, I hated it. I, every, I hated every moment of it. Mm. But I felt, a lot of that. Mm -hmm. I felt like this was my opportunity to, you know, finish strong and make sure that I made my stamp to where I could have a, a reach the most potential that I could before mm -hmm. getting to the NFL. This is the last chance I had to make that last impression. So mm. it was a lot of pressure. But at the same time, like I heard today, you know, I mean, not today, this week, and talking to Jesse Its Itzler, Pressure, pressure is a privilege. Yeah. You no want doubt. that pressure. So even though you got all the coaches there, you got the top talent there, you got everybody, the GMs, the owners looking at you in this one facility, you're up against the best. Man, enjoy that pressure and mm. realize that it's a privilege. So just sacrifice and, and push through it. I feel like mm. I can bring out the worst and best pe in people. Pressure, it's really your choice. No doubt. And you have overcome pressure. You've overcome so many things on and off the field. It's why we love you. Uh, honestly, we, me and my friends have been talking about going to the Kentucky Derby this year. Face your fear. So, you know, it's just, you know, new, be new beginnings, you know. Did That's you, like going down to a shark Was that cage. like an invite kind of to us? Well, we'll yeah, right. Well, I'll protect I mean, you. I'm not, up, afraid, yeah. of, I'm not afraid <laughs> of horses <laughs> at all. Wait, there, can I you ever ride a say, horse? Man, everybody was joking, like, <laughs> 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 after the battle with cancer and stuff like that, there yeah. was like, uh, like Houston was trying to tell me that I should just come out on war paint just with my shirt yes. off and just come out the tunnel like and that would be my reintroduction like back into the football. Like <laughs> 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 But it might have a tantrum. I <laughs> gotta tell you that, Nate, like, yeah. Eric, you're very, you're very safe, but you're actually terrifying. Like, yeah. I'm, I, you know, when athletes come in here and I try to think, like, on the field, what are you like? You're like pr predator, like scary. Yes. So the fact that you're afraid of horses is like my new favorite thing ever, it's even though funny. I'm six years old. So He's afraid not afraid of to hit Gronk. And I, know, it's I was afraid of safeties like him. I mean, so. yeah. you're and I know firsthand. No doubt. Terrifying. Hey, listen, um, Chiefs All Pro Safety, Eric Berry. Hey, thank you for joining thank us. You. I appreciate you. I appreciate what you stand for. I appreciate what you do. But more importantly, your humility, your honesty, and your transparency. You are a powerful man, extremely powerful. When you talk, it is, um, it is something that everybody should listen to and take to heart. So, man, enjoy yourself and have fun with the rest of the 2018. You, appreciate y'all having me, man. Great job, Barry. All right. We will uh, be back after this. Coming up, the man that made Jimmy Garoppolo the highest-paid quarterback in the NFL joins us live to tell us what went into that decision. Jimmy